Hello everyone, I'm Yvonne, a children's librarian here at the Manchester City Library, and I would love, like to welcome you all to Elementary Experiments Fall Edition, um, or to welcome you back if you were here with us during the summer. Um, here we will do experiments um, and activities aimed at um, elementary grades one through six um, with a focus on STEAM or science, technology, engineering, arts, or math. Um, with the school year starting, we know that everyone has a lot to do, uh, so we decided to post elementary experiments here online um, and then do them together in person on the very last Tuesday um, of the month at 3.30 p.m. at the Manchester City Library. Uh, so we will be posting um, two elementary experiments, one on the first Tuesday of the month, the second on the third Tuesday of the month, um, and then on the last Tuesday of the month, we will do both of those in person for everyone who um, would like to or can attend. So if you want to join us in person, please visit our website and register so that we can make sure that we have enough um, materials and crafts for everyone who comes. Um, we are going to continue to post here um, to share our crafts and activities with as many people as possible. But if you are in grades one through six and you like what you see, remember that we are doing that monthly wrap up in person on the last Tuesday. Uh, so now that we've covered all of that, let's take it in to this week's elementary experiments. Hello everyone and welcome to our first elementary experiments of fall, but we're all kind of holding on to summer a little bit. So we're actually doing a picnic party for our theme this week. Um, so we are going to be making some um, ice cream in a bag and we're also going to be making some really cool pinwheels um, that you can play with um, outside or inside if you would like. Um, so let's jump right in and gather our um, items for our very first activity. All right, so we do kind of need uh, some, a few more items uh, than maybe we normally do for this, um, but I think it's going to be super fun. I have made ice cream in a bag before. Um, I do want to say that um, it's not going to be the same as ice cream that you would get out of your freezer unless you put it in your freezer to get a little bit harder. Um, normally, um, depending on how hot it is when you make it, this ice cream is going to be either kind of like a soft serve, so the kind you get um, like at McDonald's, or, um, or else kind of more like a milkshake, but um, it usually tastes great either way. So what we're going to need is um, we're going to need um, a larger bag. So this is a gallon size Ziploc bag and we do want them to seal if at all possible. Um, and then a quart size, um, that's what I have, a Ziploc bag. This is the one that we want to seal the most because um, this is what we are going to put our liquids in and make our ice cream in. Um, and you might actually want two bags if you have them so you can um, double it up just in case one opens. You don't want your ice cream to get ruined by getting a lot of salt in it. Speaking of salt, we do need um, a half a cup of salt. I have a little bit more than that here, but this is um, rock salt, um, sometimes known as ice cream salt. Um, theoretically, I think you can use regular salt, but I've heard mixed um, reviews on how that turns out. So if you can get um, the rock salt, definitely do that. Okay, we've got some sugar to make our ice cream um, sweet. Um, we've also got some um, flavors. So we've got our vanilla here, um, nice and traditional. I also have some banana extract that I think I'm going to try on mine. Maybe it'll be terrible, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, and then also, finally, we have our milk. So I'm actually going to try um, making it with soy milk. Um, it should be able to, from what I have read. Um, but if you are using um, like cow's milk, uh, you wanna make sure that you use a milk that has some fat in it, right? So um, um, half and half is probably the best that I have heard. So that is, um, I think, half cream and half milk. 
um, but also like whole milk um, or, or cream, anything like that that has a lot of fat, which is what kind of helps make the ice cream. Um, but like I said, um, I have read that soy milk works if you um, cannot eat um, lactose for any reason or you don't um, drink animal byproducts, totally fine. Um, apparently coconut milk also works, so you can experiment, which is what we're here to do anyway. Okay, so I think that's everything. Um, obviously, I also have my various measuring cups and spoons. So, um, um, and then I'm going to get the ice that we need um, when we actually need it because I don't want it to melt while I'm talking to you because sometimes I talk too much. So, first things first. All right, I have gotten our ice um, and have the rock salt. I'm going to actually wait a second um, to put the rock salt in because um, as you may know from um, the winter, when you put rock, when you put salt onto ice, it actually melts, um, which is how we get our ice cream. But I also want to keep my ice from melting. So what we're going to do first um, for me is take our smaller bag and we're going to add our um, half a cup of our milk or milk substitute or cream, as it were. Um, and we're going to put a uh, half a cup into that, as well as our sugar, um, our vanilla, and any extras, which for me will be my banana extract. So let's see, we want um, the half cup of our liquid, then we are going to want a half a teaspoon of our vanilla extract or other flavoring, one tablespoon of sugar, because we like that sugar, um, and I think that's everything. So I'm going to get that in the bag. Okay, so now I'm going to press out as much air as I possibly can without spilling anything. Um, and that's going to also help um, the bag from coming undone when we're shaking it all around as well. Okay, so that's pretty good. And we're going to take our bag of ice. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour in um, a half of rock salt. Okay, and we're going to take our small bag and we're going to put it into our large one. Remember, you can um, put the small bag in a couple bags if you want to be extra careful. Um, and we're going to we're going to sort of scoot the ice and salt so that they kind of cover the smaller bag a little bit. Now we are going to close. Okay, and now we are, it's time to shake our ice cream um, until it actually forms into ice cream. This could take a while, so it's good if you have more than one person to help you shake. Um, also, if you have like a small hand towel, you can actually put your bag into the towel and then hold the corners because um, part of the reason why it's so hard for one person to, to do all the shaking is because it gets so cold. So you can hold the corners and not actually touch the ice while you shake. Of course, the other reason is just that your arms get tired after a lot of shaking. So if you have um, someone to help you, then you can um, switch back and forth and take turns. Um, and you know, if you promise them some of your ice cream at the end, they'll probably be happy to help you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to shake um, really well for at least five minutes before we check on our ice cream. Um, and then we will um, get back here and see how it goes. Okay, so here I am after five minutes of 
whole bunch of um, shaking. All right, hopefully my bag stays sealed because there is a lot of water in my larger bag and I really hope I don't have any salt water in my ice cream. But here we are, here is my ice cream. Um, it looks like it actually froze pretty well. Let's go ahead and get it a little taste test. You guys can see that. Um, yeah, I think that turned out pretty well. And it tastes good too. Definitely um, can taste the banana flavor I put in there. Mm. Okay, I am very pleased with how this turned out. Um, and I just wanted to do a quick um, chat about why it turned out so well. Um, besides my amazing following the directions ability. Um, so we did talk a little bit about how um, silt will make ice melt faster. Remember like when in the winter time when people saying, oh, they're salting the roads, even though we don't use real salt usually anymore on the roads, they used to. Um, and it's because salt does make um, ice melt at a, um, a lower temperature, right? And what's really interesting is when the ice melts, um, the melting ice actually absorbs heat. So um, because we have our, um, our liquid mixture, our um, milk or cream, our milk substitute in the middle of all that ice, when the ice absorbs heat um, to melt, um, it actually takes heat away from our um, mixture in the middle um, and actually freezes it. Um, and um, so it actually lowers the temperature of our bag to um, below um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really cool. And, and it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around, um, or at least it was hard for me to wrap my mind around like the first time I thought about it. It's like, oh wow, something melting can actually make other things cooler. Um, but it's kind of the same way that when we sweat, um, and then the sweat um, evaporates from our skin. So the sweat actually gets warmer because it goes from a liquid to a gas, but then we feel cooler because the little beads of sweat have actually cooled our skin as um, they themselves got warmer. So it's, it's that kind of idea. Um, and I hope you had some fun learning some very, very tasty science. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed baking ice cream. Remember, if you are not able to make ice cream, um, where you are, if you are in grades one through six, um, and you can join us on the last Tuesday of this month um, in September, we are going to be making some ice cream at the library. So um, definitely come and join us if you can. Um, I'm gonna put my ice cream um, away in the freezer before it melts, um, and I'm gonna enjoy, enjoy it later. But we are going to move on to our craft for um, our picnic party elementary experiments. All right, so here we are um, at the craft portion of our elementary experiments. Um, if you can get a kit, um, it's going to look like this. Remember, um, um, our kits are going to be at the Manchester City Library. Um, so we are doing them a little bit different um, this fall. So um, if you want a kit from the Manchester City Library, you're gonna need to go to the children's um, reference desk um, and ask for one. Um, when we release this video, um, we're all gonna, only going to have a limited number of kits available for that week. Um, and then we will have more kits um, for our in-person event um, at, on the last Tuesday of the month, which is the 27th of September um, this month. Um, and then we, if we have any extra after that, we will then put those out as well because we want everyone to have as much fun as they can. Um, but if you can get a kit, it is going to look like this. Um, when we take a look inside of it, we've got directions. We've also got a couple of sheets of paper. 
Um, we are making a watermelon pinwheels, so that's why we have a green sheet and a red sheet. Um, if you're doing this at home or you um, want to make something besides a watermelon, you can find your own paper, but we are going to make some pinwheels um, for our fun picnic party. Uh, we also have a straw. If um, you get one of our kit, it's going to have a pre-punched hole right there. Um, and then we have a brad. Now these brads are super long, a bit ridiculously long, but um, we needed them to be longer rather than shorter so that um, there would be enough freedom of movement for our pinwheels to spin. So we're going to have some fun with some really long brads. Okay, um, from home, you are going to need um, coloring supplies if you want them. Technically, you don't need coloring supplies. Um, then we are going to need something to poke a hole in our paper, so like a pencil would work. Um, if you have like just a normal one hole punch, um, that's going to make the smoothest turning, but you don't necessarily need it if you have um, already a good hole in the straw. Then we're also going to need some scissors. We're going to um, need some glue um, and then um, we have some tape, which is optional depending on how you make your pinwheel. Okay, so um, first things first is to actually go ahead and glue um, your red and green paper together. Um, if you want to make the um, watermelon pinwheel with us. Although, just kidding, I decided I'm going to just use the glue stick because um, the glue doesn't need to be super strong and I'd rather not make you guys wait or make me wait while it dries. So we're just going to go ahead and glue stick one side of the paper all together and then just sandwich them and let it go. Okay, so now we have our um, square ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to take our square and we're going to fold it so the corners touch into a triangle. I'm folding it with the green sides out um, because the green side is the rind of the watermelon, so I want it to be on the outside. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut um, down the middle here and we're going to cut about two thirds of the way. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You don't have the exact, but like a little bit more than half towards the center. We're going to open up our square. We're going to fold it so that the other two um, points touch. And we're going to do the same thing. All right, so that means when you open it, we're gonna have um, cuts on all four of our corners. So um, now what we're going to do is we are going to take the thing that we're using as a hole punch um, and we are going to punch some holes. So we're gonna take it starting on one corner and we're going to put a hole there. Um, and then we are going to skip this next corner here and then put a hole in this one. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. So basically there's only going to be one hole per like triangle wedge and it's always going to be on the same side. So mine's on the right side of each of our little triangle wedges. And if you need some help um, punching holes because we don't want to rip the paper too much, Definitely, definitely go ahead and ask. It's always okay to ask for help. Okay, so now what we're going to do um, is we're going to do our decorations. So if we're going to do our watermelon, um, we're going to draw some watermelon seeds on um, the red side. So the what and the watermelon seeds that are going to be visible are the ones um, kind of from the unpoked corners um, towards the center. So if we go ahead, if you see on the finished example, 
um, part of this is going to be covered up. So you can definitely decorate that part, but just know that they won't be seen. Okay, so we're going to do that. All right, now on the green side, um, we can go ahead and draw some darker watermelon stripes. Um, and this time we're going to go from the um, points that have holes um, and just sort of like scribble on down. See, if you look at our finished example, um, it's the parts that have holes that are going to be visible on the um, outside. And there's the back. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put our hole in the very middle of our pinwheel, right where all of the um, lines intersect. And now is where we're actually going to take our paper and make it into a pinwheel for real. So we're going to take our brad um, and we're going to take um, one of the corners with a hole, it doesn't really matter which, and we're going to put the brad through the hole, and then we're going to go the next one in line and put the brad through that, and we're going to continue all the way around, and then we're going to go ahead and put that through the center. It can be a little bit tricky to see, but there we go. It's going to go through the center, and we're just going to make sure that that's all setting. All right, so now you can see um, the pinwheel shape. Then go ahead and find your straw, and this is where we're going to put it through that hole that is already punched. And then we are going to open the brad legs at the back. Now, this is when you have to think a little bit, right? So we need to make sure that um, we don't make the brad um, too tight. So because we want this pinwheel to be able to spin, right? So we have to think um, as we're attaching it, but even as we're making it, how is the pinwheel going to spin? Um, now, if you're doing it just like I did, if you don't have a um, hole punch with you at home um, and you're just going to use your pencil or a pen or something, then it is the larger hole inside of the straw that's actually going to make it spin. So that means that the brad is going to have to be able to turn with the pinwheel. Um, and that is a little bit um, frustrating with the long brads. So you're just going to have to be careful and remember that this, these metal pieces are spinning. Okay, I'm trusting you guys. Um, now, if you did have a hole punch that you used um, for all of the holes that we put in here, then you could actually um, attach the brad to the straw and the paper is the part that could actually spin around the brad. Um, so we've definitely got a little bit of um, pops engineering going on with our pinwheel, but I think that it's going to work well either way. Here, let's, let's give this one a test. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. But do think um, about how you might um, improve on our pinwheel design, um, either how it's made, so like what spins, how easy it spins, um, how it catches the wind um, in its little pockets, um, or um, how you would design it. So like maybe you don't like watermelons, maybe you really like oranges and you wish that it was an orange pinwheel instead of a watermelon pinwheel. Um, how would you make it? These are always great things to think about um, after our crafts. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us um, for our picnic party elementary experiments. Um, I hope you had a great time um, making pinwheels and making um, ice cream in a bag. These are both some tasty uh, and fun treats um, before our summer is um, officially over and the weather gets colder. 
Um, we are going to have um, one more video elementary experiments um, on the third week, third week um, uh, this month, um, still on Tuesday, same, uh, same time, same place. Um, and then on the last Tuesday, um, as we said in the intro, sorry to keep repeating, I just want to make sure everyone um, remembers this new shift. Um, so the last Tuesday of this month, we will have our in-person um, events at the Manchester City Library where we will um, do all of our crafts and our activities um, from this month's videos in person. So if you really um, feel like that would be a fun thing or you weren't able to do it at home and you want to do it at the library, um, please go to our website and register so we know um, how many people are coming and how much um, ice cream stuff we should have on hand. Um, so that is about it. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, as usual, I'm going to put some um, book recommendations um, on the screen uh, if you'd like to read a little bit more about what we've done today um, or stories about what we've done today. Um, other than that, I'm going to say goodbye and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye.